Let us see the isomerism in organic compounds. See, we, we know that isomerism is a very major phenomenon which is there in organic compounds because of which the compounds with the same molecular formula exist in different structural formulas. And all those uh, uh, compounds which, are, which differs in the structural formulas are called isomers and they have their different physical and chemical properties and different identity. Now isomerism is mainly is of two types. It's of two types. The first is called structural isomerism. In this, the isomers differ from one another on the basis of their basic structure. So the basic structure of the isomers will be different in this, this type of isomerism. Now this type of isomerism is of four types. It's of four types. Uh, the first is called chain isomerism. In this, what we find is that the isomers are having different chains. So alk, the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain will be different. Like, let me give an example. Like, suppose we have CH3, CH2, 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 and CH3. So this, this is called a hexane. Now we can also have CH3, CH, CH3, CH2, CH2, and CH3. So this is called a 2-methyl pentane. We can also have this one as CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CH2, and CH3. So this becomes what? 2-2-dimethyl butane. So all of these are having same formula, molecular formula, but different structural formulas in which the alk, the longest chain is different and that is why they all are called chain isomers. Now, the second type of isomerism is, is position isomerism. Now, in position isomerism, the position of the substitution or functional group groups gets changed. So the locant or the carbon number to which they are attached gets changed. Otherwise, the alk, the chain uh, or the main chain name remains the same. That doesn't change this. Now, let me give an example of this. What we find is like this one is here is called pent1ene. This is how we name this. In a very similar way, now let me give you this example. This is called pent2ene. So these two are what? are position isomers. But remember, if I draw this compound as this, now this is what is 3-methyl-butyl-2-ene. Now this compound is what? Is chain isomer of the first as well as of second. But remember, the first and second are position isomers. So this is how we have position isomerism. The next type of structure, structural isomerism is the functional isomerism. In this, the isomers differ in the functional group which they are having. So the secondary suffix will be different. The examples are alcohols and ethers. Alcohol ethers are functional isomers of each other. Let me give an example. Let's take an example of a C3H8O, which is the molecular formula. In, by this formula, we can have CH3, CH2, CH2 over it, which is propanol. And with the same formula, we can have CH3O, CH2, CH3, which is called methoxyethane. So these two are functional isomers. Another example is aldehydes and ketones. They all are again are functional uh, isomers of each other. The example, let's take C3H6O. With this formula, we can have CH3, CH2, CHO, which is called propanol. And with the same formula, we can have CH3, CO, CH3, which is called propanon or acetone. So these are, this type of isomerism is called functional isomerism. The next and the fourth type of isomerism, structural isomerism is called metamerism. In metamerism, what we find is that the isomers differs on the basis of the carbon chain which are present across the functional group. Yes, across the functional group. 
So this type of isomerism, structural isomerism is only shown by those organic compounds which are having the function groups in which the chains are present on across or on both the sides of that particular function group. Like let me give an example in case of ethers. Like let me give you this type of example which, 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 makes, which makes it very very clear. Like this one is called a methoxy, one methoxy propane. Now we can have uh, another type of ether with the same formula CH3, CH2, O, CH2, CH3 which is called uh, ethoxyethane. Now you can see this, both of these neither are, are position nor they are uh, chain isomers, they are metamers. Here across this group we have having a chain of 1 and 3 carbon, here we have across this group 2 and 2 carbon chains, 2 of 2, two carbon uh, change of two carbon each. So this is how we have uh, the metamerism. Now this uh, the second type of isomerism we have in organic compounds is called uh, stereoisomerism. In the stereoisomerism what we find is that the organic compounds will be uh, the isomers will be having same molecular formula and same structural formula yes but different spatial or three dimensional arrangement of groups so they will be having uh, three-dimensional different arrangement of the groups maybe across a double bond or maybe around the asymmetric carbon atoms and that this is how that they get uh, this type of isomerism is called stereoisomerism it is of uh, two types remember it's one called geometrical uh, and other is called optical so we will be doing these two geometric and optical later on optical is not there in our syllabus we will be doing geometrical which is cis trans type in the hydrocarbon chapter along with the alkenes so this is how we have the isomerism in organic compounds now let us understand the fundamental concepts in the organic reaction mechanism the first thing we need to understand in this is that in organic reactions let this reaction a reactant a gets converted to the product b now this organic simple reaction definitely involves what two steps like A first changes to an intermediate I and then this I in the next step changes to B. Now this I we call this I as intermediate the reason being that it is formed during the reaction and gets consumed in the reaction only. Now the, uh, the stereochemistry, the shape, the structure, the, the, the types of bonds of this product B depends on this intermediate I, which in turn depends on what of course since it is being formed from A, how it is being formed from A. So remember the kinetics of the organic reaction, the uh, the structures, the shape, the stereochemistry, etc. of the products in organic reactions mainly depends on the intermediates. And of course, once intermediates are formed, since if any kind of rearrangement are possible within the molecule so that more stable re re uh, intermediates can be formed, all those systems, uh, all those rearrangements takes place and that is how these intermediates are very, very important to us. We, we must understand these intermediates and we must understand how they change from one from one, one form to the other so that they become more stable. Another important thing is this, the sequential account of these step, uh, steps which are involved in any reaction, which are involving what the energetics of the bond form, bond cleave, cleavages and bond form during the reaction and which involves the kinetics or the transformation or the speed with which the reactant changes into products is basically called the reaction mechanism. So in organic reactions, organic reactions basically are of all of moderate rate. They can be easily studied and their kinetics can be easily studied. We can actually therefore manipulate their intermediates and therefore we can get products of our own desire. And that is what these all basics in organic reactions uh, or mechanisms are very, very important. Now in this, the first 
to be taken account is the fission of covalent bond. Fission of covalent bond. Fission of covalent bond takes place by two methods. The one is called hydrolytic fission and other is called homolytic fission. Now let us discuss first the hydrolytic fission of bond. In this hydrolytic fission of bond what happens is like suppose let us take an example of CH3Br. Now in this methyl uh, bromide or bromomethane what we find is this that this CBr bond is highly polar. It's already polar because bromine is more electronegative than carbon. The shared pair of electrons are, are, are already are more towards bromine. When such kind of a molecular species are provided a suitable polar medium, what happens is the, the, this shared pair of electron gets shifted towards bromine. And what we get in this is CH3 plus and Br minus. So this, this kind of unequal distribution of the pair of electrons which are being shared between the two atoms in the organic compounds is called heterolytic fission of bond. Why this happens? Because one of the atoms which are, which in, with which, in within which the pair is being shared is more electronegative than the other one. That is why always whenever the suitable medium is being provided and energy is being provided for the cleavage of the bond, the, both the electrons move towards the more electronegative one and what we get are cations and the anions. These cations and the anions in organic chemistry are called electrophiles and this negatively charged species is called nucleophile. So what do you need to remember is the heterolytic cleavage of covalent bonds in organic compounds leads to the formation of electrophiles and nucleophiles. So this is what is heterolytic fission and remember it, it takes place in polar molecular species taken in polar medium so that they get easily solvated or hydrated. Now, uh, we need to know another thing, important thing is this, that in, in this heterolytic fission of bond, we have got an intermediate, let me repeat this reaction again for you. What we have got is this CH3 plus and Br minus. Now, what happens is this CH3 plus species is called carbocation. It's also called carbonium ion. So those species, charged species, which are having what, in which the carbon is having a positive charge are called carbocations or carbonium ion. Now, remember, uh, these carbonium ions or carbocations are having what sp2 hybridization, they are trigonal planar in structure and their stability, they can be of different types. Their stability is like this like tertiary carbocation is most stable followed by your secondary then your primary so it's like this the reason being because due to the plus i effect from the three methyl groups which we'll be doing later on of course this these are plus i effect from the three methyl groups the positive charge of this carbon is, is what neutralized to the maximum extent that's why tertiary is the most stable one followed by secondary primary and then methylene carbocation if it is there yes of course if in any case carbocation involves a resonance like allyl or benzyl they are found to be much more stable than this these tertiary one now another important thing in this the same case is that not this is not always that the, the carbon will be acquiring a positive charge now let me give you an example of uh, this molecular species which is called ethyl magnesium bromide which is also called a uh, Grignard's reagent. Now in this Grignard's reagent what we find is this carbon is more electronegative than magnesium. So carbon is having a, a partial negative charge. When exposed to or when given a polar suitable polar medium what happens is that the shared pair of electron gets transferred to this carbon and what, what we get is CH3, CH2 minus and MgBr plus. 
So in this case, again, we are getting intermediates. We are getting carbon uh, species as an intermediate in which carbon is having a negative charge. And so such species, this is again is a heterotic fusion of bond. And in this case, the carbon species which is having a negative charge is called carbanion. This carbanion is, of course, is sp3 hybridized. Only differences it is pyramidal in shape or in structure. And we need to know this that the stability order of these carbanions will be the most stable will be methylene carbanion, then followed by your primary carbanion. Why? Because plus i effect of this methyl group will in what increase the electron density on this carbon, now which is having a negative charge. So accumulation of charge leads to what instability. So this is primary is less stable for and the, um, lesser than this will be the secondary carbanion, uh, and the least stable will be your tertiary carbanion. So this is their uh, uh, stability order is and this is what we get the different type of species like carbocations and carbonions by heterolytic fission of the covalent bond. So let us take homolytic fission of bond. Homolytic means equal distribution of the pair of electron which is being shared between two atoms in organic compounds. Let us take example of uh, CH3Cl. When this kind of a molecule is given heat or light so that the cleavage of the bond takes place, what happens is the two electrons which are being shared between this carbon and chlorine, they one of one of the electron which was of carbon, the carbon acquires that electron, and the one of the electrons of the out of the pair goes to the chlorine only. So that's an equal equal distribution of the pair of the electrons which are being shared between carbon and chlorine. So and you need to remember whenever we put up this arrow like with this one arm only, which is also called fish hook, it means only transferring of one electron is taking place. And if it is drawn this arrow with both the arms. It, that means the shifting of the two electrons takes place. So one electron of, out of the pair goes to this carbon, another goes to this chlorine, and what we get out of this is CH3 dot plus Cl dot. CH3 dot plus Cl dot. So do on these neutral, these neutral odd electron species are called free radicals. Remember. These are called free radicals. So homolytic fission of the covalent bonds leads to the formation of free radicals. Let us see this, uh, your methyl free radical. You can easily now, you can see here, it's having only seven electrons. Now there is no formal charge on this carbon, therefore the, uh, it's a neutral species. But since it's having seven electrons, it's an odd electron species, it will be paramagnetic in nature, very, very unstable. And these are the characteristic features of what we have, these neutral uh, free, free radicals. These are very reactive, their reactions are very, very fast, therefore mostly are uncontrolled. Now let us see the stability order. The most stable free radical will, of course, will be your tertiary because electron deficiency of this carbon which is having this odd electron is satisfied by the plus i effect of the three methyl groups. So it is tertiary which is most stable followed by what you are having is secondary. Then uh, we are having what primary and the least stable is your methylene free radical.